Hello, everyone. I am Yuling Wang from Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and I am here to present our collaborative research with Zhi Hao Zhang from Shanghai Jiao Tong University and Zi Han Zhang from the National Institute of Informatics. Let's begin with the edge coloring problem. Given the graph G and the color list L, the objective is to assign a color from L to each vertex, such that no two adjacent edges have the same color. We call such an assignment a proper coloring. Here are some examples of proper edge colorings. We can reframe this as a vertex coloring problem on the line graph of G. In this graph, the vertices are the edges of the original graph, and two vertices are adjacent if their corresponding edges are adjacent in G. As you can see, the edge coloring instances translate directly to vertex coloring instances on the line graph. We usually employ Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm to sample from a given distribution. Specifically, we use global dynamics to sample from all proper vertex colorings uniformly. The process begins at a proper coloring. At each step, we pick a vertex V uniformly at random and a legal color C for V ensuring it does not conflict with the colors of its neighbors. For example, we pick vertex E and red color, and we proceed to recolor E with red. Repeating this step for sufficiently many times, the sequence of colorings converges to a uniform distribution over all proper colorings. There is a conjecture that Global dynamics is rapid mixing when the number of colors Q is no less than delta plus 2, while delta denotes the maximum degree of vertices, and we define delta L as the maximum degree of edges, which corresponds to the maximum degree of vertices on the line graph. For any edge E with n vertices UV, its degree is the sum of the degrees of u, v, minus 2. So delta L will range between delta and 2 delta minus 2. CDMPP tells us that when Q exceeds 11 over 3 delta L, the mixing time is O n log n, and ALOG21 refined the required extra color to 4 over 3 delta. Our work proved that q greater than 1 plus little or 1 delta is enough. In order to sample proper colorings, we first encode them with a structure known as simplicial complex. A proper coloring is encoded as a collection of vertex color pairs. For example, this coloring translates to 1 with orange, 2 with blue, and 3 with green. We define the simplicial complex C to be the subset closure of such sets, and it is exactly the collection of encoding of all partial colorings. Let CK denote the collection of partial colorings of exactly K vertices which is one level on the simplicial complex. In our analysis, we introduce global walks on one level of simplicial complex. The global walk are composed of two steps, the down step and the up steps. The down step removes a pair uniformly at random, and the up step adds a pair with a probability based on the number of coloring containing this pair. For instance, we start from the partial coloring like this in C3. First, we remove the color, for example, of E and walk into a coloring in C2. And then we pick the vertex H with pink and walk back to a coloring C3. The down-up walk 
is exactly the global dynamics when we applied it to Cn, the space of all proper color rings on the entire graph with m vertices. We also define local works on the space of partial color rings after pinning certain elements. For example, we fix the partial coloring tile on E and F, and then we explore uh, the space C tau, which is the partial colorings on remaining vertices G and H. At the same time, ensuring the consistency with the paint coloring on E and F. The local work P tau moves through the space of available vertex color pairs after pinning tau, and we denote it by C tau 1. So starting from V1, C1, the local work moves to V2, C2 with probability proportional to the number of partial colorings containing both V1, C1 and V2, C2. The local to global principle tells us the relationship between the second largest eigenvalue of local and the global works. Since the global work on Cn is exactly the global dynamics, we can establish the rapid mixing of it if the local works have the second largest eigenvalues bounded appropriately. The trickle down theorem plays an important role in our analysis of local works. It allows us to understand the relationship between P and Px, which are the local works before and after fixing an element, x. However, it provides sufficient bounds for coloring only when the number of colors is greater than the order of the graph. To address this limitation, we compare more than just the second largest eigenvalue, but the entire matrix. Our goal is to find a matrix upper bound for local works, which is the main idea of matrix trickle-down theorem. Matrix trickle-down theorem showed that by constructing a matrix Mx, upper bounding the local work Px, and satisfying certain conditions of M and Mx, we can establish M as the upper bound of the local work P. Applying this theorem recursively, our task is simplified to construct a family of matrices meeting the base case where there are only two free vertices and the induction constraints captured by the red inequality for all other levels. We begin by setting M tau as a block diagonal matrix with blocks of each color, and then we focus on one block M tau C. Assume each vertex has beta extra color. We can establish the base case by direct computation, and we write M tau C in this form of beta. For the induction step, we perform subtle decompositions. First, we break down M into an off-diagonal matrix A and a diagonal matrix B. We further decompose A into matrices corresponding to clicks in the line graph. For each vertex in the original graph, there is a corresponding click in the line graph whose edges are disjoint. For example, for the vertex A, in the original graph, all the edges adjacent to A, AB, AC, AD, and AE, compose a click in the line graph. So we set a matrix for each vertex in the original graph. That is to say, we consider each click in the line graph separately. So the constraint turns into this form. Since the right hand side as the red part is a diagonal matrix, our goal is to set appropriate A and upper bound the left-hand side. 
to transform this system into a set of scalar inequalities. If we define A recursively in this form, it allows the two terms cancel each other and the entries in A will be negative expected value of 1 over the available coloring on U and B, where LU omega denotes the list of available colors on U after painting omega. However, this leads to a large quadratic term. To address this, we introduce a coefficient AH in A, where H is the click size of the pinning tau, and we roughly write A in terms of AH, the number of available colors of one vertex LU omega and the adjacent matrix of the click I. Then we compute the expression of the quadratic term directly and we write the left hand side in this form. Now we just need to adjust the value of a h for any edge to minimize the spectral radius of the red part as a whole. At the same time, we will keep the remainder term is a lower order term. If we successfully bound the left-hand side with a diagonal matrix, then the system is simplified to a set of scalar inequalities. The solution of the inequalities will act as the entries in B. In summary, under the condition Q greater than 1 plus little of 1 delta L, we prove that the local work on the base case is properly bounded and we construct a family of matrices satisfying the constraints in the matrix trickle-down theorem. Finally, use local to global principle, we obtain the rapid mixing of global dynamics. So our main result is that the global dynamics of vertex coloring on the line graph mix rapidly when q greater than 1 plus little or 1 delta l. That is to say, for the original edge coloring problem, the global dynamics mix rapidly if q is greater than 2 plus little or 1 delta. The matrix trickle-down theorem provides us a new approach to analyzing global dynamics allowing us to reduce the number of colors needed for edge coloring to 2 plus little or 1 delta. However, Vising's theorem ensures that a simple graph is edge colorable if Q is at least delta plus 1, and DHP20 showed the rapid mixing of global dynamics on trees when Q is at least delta plus 1. The open problem is determine the computational threshold in terms of the degree of the original graph. When Q is smaller than 2 delta, the single site global dynamics become reducible, which indicates the need for innovative methods to narrow the gap. Thanks for your attention. I look forward to any questions you may have.